Colour Elementary School, Colour Hale Elementary School, and Colour Hale Neighborhood Center. And on West Kauai, LA, LA Elementary, and Waimea High School, those are all area, all schools open as shelters for those who do need to evacuate on the island of Kauai. Now, um, the earliest arrivals for the tsunami, the first wave is expected to hit Kauai at 3.07 Hawaii Standard Time. So the first waves would hit the island of Kauai first. And on Maui, uh, they are also asking people to evacuate. And if I can read a, a list of where the shelters are open right now on Maui County, on Central Maui, the War Memorial is open, um, Velma Santos Community Center, Maui High School, and Kahului Schools it, parking lot is open for shelters. On South, in South Maui, parking lots are only open at Kihei Community Center. And on West Maui, the baseball field, behind the field, Fleming Park, and Lahaina Gym parking lot are open as shelters. East Maui, um, Camp KNI, Hana High and Elementary School, Upcountry, Hannibal Tavares, Community Center, Eddie Tam Gym, and Kula Community Center are open. And on Molokai, Mitchell Poole Center is open as shelters. So that's the situation on Maui. And then one more thing that uh, Civil Defense wanted to make sure that everyone knew. For those that uh, English is a second language, there are foreign language radio stations that are broadcasting information um, and warnings as they come out. And for just a quick list of where those are. For information in Japanese, you can turn to Keizu, Samoan language uh, broadcast on KMBI, actually, and also on the KMBI. expecting the waves to arrive here in the islands just after 3 in the morning. Right now, the latest numbers from the city of South Florida is that a wave is still up. It's an ongoing wave that's arrived at the shores of the island. Um, the one thousand numbers in the Florida City is coming from the city of Florida, but it's really not the city of about the airport situation. Well, right now, only the National Airport is open. And I just want to make sure that we have a lot of people who are going to be able to get around. We're going to be able to get around. Council before they left, uh, all those are foreign flights, and so of course, they're flying to the state of the that lives between uh, the airport and the ocean, uh, their evacuation will actually go to the airport. So they have almost no for them. Uh, the last check uh, it is uh, all the airports that they arrive, so basically they don't get to the airport, but the ship cannot be happy at this time by anyone. Uh, but the town of San Juan is certainly going to have to share the location of the airport. They're not going to be able to go to the airport for right now. Uh, they're just feeling the need. Thank you. 
in um, about an hour and 15 minutes from now. That's, that's the best thing to do. Uh, so far, there's really no reason to come to the airport right now uh, because, uh, of course, if you're picking up someone on that continental flight coming out of Micronesia at 535, once again, just wait and see what happens. Uh, whoever comes here at the airport, uh, uh, the airport personnel here will take care of them. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of space here. There's a lot of safe areas here. So we really advise everyone just to stay off the roads and, and let's see what happens first and at that point to, to make a decision. Dan, we also wanted to ask you what the latest is on Honolulu Harbor. Harbors around the islands uh, also keeping an eye on what's going on. Uh, all the harbors, uh, as soon as all this information started to come out, the, the harbors were evacuated and closed. Uh, the ships, uh, a parade of ships uh, basically out of Honolulu uh, Harbor uh, this evening as they all went out to see uh, a safe situation with all the harbors and also all the heavy equipment uh, that was in the harbor grounds. We moved them to higher ground. Uh, out of the tsunami um, area there, you know, you know, the area where tsunami could reach them. And DOT crews are on standby with all of our heavy equipment, all of our equipment and vehicles, uh, highways, airports, and harbors. And so uh, right now the harbor is uh, pretty much a ghost town. And, and I know that Nimitz Highway, I think, has been closed. A lot of the coastal roads have been closed, whether they be state or county. And uh, just anybody... You know, as an inkling of going down to the coast, just, just stay away. Let's make room for people who have to leave the area and for emergency vehicles. And, uh, you know, basically like everybody else, we're, we're, we're planning and preparing for the worst and, and we're praying for the best. All right, Dan Meisenzal, uh, the spokesman from the Department of Transportation. And as you can see, people are heeding the word just a few cars on the major roadways right now. And he mentioned the harbors being cleared, and it, it sounds uh, a little backwards that in a tsunami they are going to safety mm -hmm. by going out into the ocean, but they're going out into the open ocean. A tsunami is dangerous when it gets to the shallow waters out in the open ocean. But those boats may not even know when that tsunami passes underneath them because uh, the water will be so deep. That's right, and a lot of mariners know that. We saw with the last uh, tsunami warning, uh, it was pretty crowded out in the water. Uh, do you know? Paul, how far people need to go if they're boating uh, away from the shoreline to get into a safe area way out in the water? Well, they recommend several hundred feet. I believe it's about 500 feet. Uh, it's uh, deep water is basically what they're expecting out of the shallow waters because once it's uh, that tsunami, which is hundreds of feet deep, uh, starts to feel that bottom is when it starts to break and starts to uh, uh, become more of like a wave that we've been talking about that we'll be riding in. Uh, on our shores. So again, uh, deep water just away from the shallow waters around the island. That's right. And uh, Dan Mize is all saying just stay off the roads. You know, it, right now it is 148. The first wave is expected to hit at 307 this morning. Uh, Kauai uh, being the first to get hit by those uh, potential waves up to uh, two meters or six feet beyond normal sea levels. Um, some of those areas that they're talking about, Haleiwa, Hilo, Kahului, these are the areas that we continue to hear about time and time again uh, uh, because of those uh, tsunami warnings. Uh, from these, or, or we see some damage from these waves as they come in from the west northwest. And speaking of our waters, we want to go ahead and turn things over to Jody Leong. She's in our newsroom and she has an update of what is going on at Kuala Basin. Jody, what's happening there? A lot going on, uh, Paul and Mahea. Boat owners and commercial boat tour boat operators, uh, when we were there, were packing up uh, their boats. They were uh, just pretty much securing everything and stocking up their boats as they prepare to leave uh, Kewala Basin to the open ocean. They said, they told us that they were looking for, they're gonna, they're gonna dock or they're gonna anchor um, in about a thousand feet of water uh, to be safe. And they said they're a little worried because it is a little windy out there, as Paul was saying a little bit earlier. This is what we saw as police were trying to evacuate everyone uh, at Kewala Basin a little earlier today. Uh, Evacuation order for an incoming tsunami has been issued. Please make your way to higher ground. Now, there are a lot of uh, boat owners that were still there. They're taking things out of their boats, off of their boats, and, and putting them into their cars. Some people were taking all the supplies from commercial tour boats to higher ground, and the rest of the crew members were taking the boats out to sea. Star of Honolulu left port uh, about a half an hour ago, about an hour ago or so, with only five crew members on board, and we saw them uh, heading out there. Um, they were also telling us that uh, there was one um, company, Hawaii Yachts, they had some uh, passengers on board that were staying in Waikiki, they were out for a dinner cruise, decided to stay on board. This is what the, the boat owners are doing to pack up. Into the car. So 
filled up the water tanks, made sure the batteries are charged, make sure we've got batteries for our flashlights. Uh, check the engine, and now we're securing stuff on the deck. Some of the boat uh, tour operators and the boat owners out there were telling us that in the last uh, tsunami warning that uh, Kewala Basin was virtually a ghost town. There are only a handful of boats still there. Uh, this. This uh, man here, his name is Michael Parker of Parker Marine Vessel Assist. Uh, he was taking some supplies off his boat um, and taking it to higher ground and said we just didn't want our supplies to be on the, on the boat if it sinks because they were going to leave their boat docked there. But they are an assist company and so they expect to be a little busy uh, a little bit later this morning. Again, at Koala Basin, they are evacuating, asking everyone to either go to higher ground or take their boats um, out to sea. And most of them told us that they were going to be leaving at about 1.30, 2 o'clock. And I think at about that time, we're going to be heading out there again. And at that time, we should probably see more of an exodus of boats and ships heading out uh, to uh, to see, uh, to, to this, wait this thing out. Back to you, Mejia. Yeah, and Jody, it's interesting. You said that, uh, you know, they're evacuating because uh, earlier Honolulu Mayor Peter Carlisle said by 2 a.m., which is, it's we're nearing that point right now, it's 1.52 in the morning, and uh, he said by 2 a.m., those evacuation or those inundation zones, people need to leave. They cannot get in, but they need to leave. So that goes the same for the boats and, and the mariners out there, right, Jody? That, that's absolutely correct. I, I did want to bring up one thing that we saw out there you know there were fire trucks and there were emergency vehicles all over the place just you know driving all over around Kalala Basin the Ala Moana area all along the coastline and still the homeless campers on Kaka in Kaka'ako near the uh, UH medical school were not budging even when the sirens were blaring and so we're gonna go back out there to see what's happening with them so far they weren't being as far as we know at about 1 15 they were not being forced out but nobody was budging, nobody was packing up. We're going to go check up on that, and we'll get that story back to you a little later. All right, Joe DeLeong reporting live from the newsroom, keeping an eye on Kevalo Basin. And, Paul, earlier we heard that uh, the homeless campers, uh, there are actually city buses available for them. Yeah, uh, Kiyoki was telling us earlier that uh, uh, not only the uh, campers over on the uh, Waianae Coast, over in, near the uh, KL Beach Park area that had been recently cleared out, uh, hundreds of those campers just moved past that beach park into the bush right past there and so uh, buses were brought in to bring those folks because they're right on the water mm -hmm. and uh, also in the Eva Beach area uh, so uh, a number of homeless campers uh, are able to seek some safety as well during this emergency. Yeah, it is troubling, uh, as we heard from Jody, to hear that the uh, homeless campers uh, in the Kaka'ako area are not moving. As you know, as you, you drive to the medical school or you go to the Children's Discovery Center, you see the the rows of tents, that there's a lot of people who live on the side there. And so hopefully when police were giving the warnings, uh, some of them start to wake up and let each other know that it is time to evacuate. Again, uh, first waves expected to hit the islands at 3.07 this morning, and 2 a.m. is that time when uh, people need to get out of the evacuation zones because police are basically shutting down all the roads in those areas. Right. We have uh, much more. We're glad that you're with us uh, through all of this, and we will be here until those waves hit, and obviously after that as well. Uh, right now we want to go ahead and uh, head back over to the uh, emergency management office. Uh, Kiyoki Kerr is standing by live with more from there. Kiyoki, what's happening? Well, Paul and Mahia, I'm standing here with Toby Claremont. He's from the Healthcare Association of Hawaii. He's actually Director of Emergency Services, monitoring how things are going on in the emergency rooms across the state. Uh, Toby, tell us, uh, what, what is the latest? Yeah, we're going into this emergency with, you know, a pretty tight bed situation overall because of flu season and other things. So right now what we're doing is we're making sure we know where everything is, making sure there's good lines of communication, and we're preparing for the possibility that we could have a wave and that could generate some casualties, disrupt utilities, and do other things. You were telling me earlier, even before this alert, happened this afternoon because of the flu season things were pretty busy how busy were they this afternoon well they're pretty tight this afternoon about five o'clock we had three of the emergency departments here in honolulu were on ambulance divert and that's usually a pretty good indicator that things are really busy that means things are so crowded that they aren't going to be taking urgent cases if they can if they can help it that's correct they'll take the emergent emergent they're really what we call priority one stuff but um, the stuff that come by ambulances that can go to another hospital we try and move them because they get the best care and um, are you getting a lot of, uh, the State Health Department was warning us, we've had this on the air a couple of times, you know, saying 
please don't just show up at a hospital saying I'm, you know, I have a hard time getting around or I'm elderly and I need some help. Um, are you getting reports that people are just showing up at hospitals and seeking, you know, seeking shelter when they're not really in a you know, medical emergency? Absolutely. You know, we, we like to say that shelters are, I mean, hospitals are not shelters, and that's really true. It's important that we be able to preserve our ability to care for injured or critically ill patients that, uh, you know, if the wave does come ashore. But being it's tight and we've got to find space for people, it, it really is a problem when people just show up expecting uh, just, you know, social admission, sometimes we call it. And, but we do realize that there's, there aren't a lot of options for people, or places for people to go, especially if they're older or have disabilities and other things. And I think that's work that we all need to do as a community. What about, uh, we talked about the, the hospitals on Oahu, what about on the neighbor islands? Because you, you liaise, you're the liaison for all of them. So tell us about the situation there. Well, the situation's fairly similar on the neighbor islands. You know, they can't divert anybody anywhere. I mean, they're not a community hospital is a community hospital. They do really well. Uh, we've got area coordinators in all the emergency operating centers over there. We've got an assessment of all their beds and people. So uh, I think it's very similar to Honolulu and looking pretty good, actually. Good. Thank you so uh, much. You're Toby Claremont. Okay, right. Good to talk to you again from the Healthcare Association of Hawaii. We're going to, uh, Kevin, I'm going to ask you to just take a look. He, it, actually, Toby's going right in there into the City and County Emergency Operating Center. Now, this is where all the department heads for the city, as well as liaisons uh, for all kinds of different departments, uh, like the American Red Cross, the Healthcare Association, we just heard, heard from Toby Claremont there, and others all go in there, uh, get briefings. They talk about issues together. They're all assigned different phones and computers so they can keep in touch with their respective departments and see problems as they come up and respond to them collectively. In the background, you see folks from the city, uh, fire departments, police departments, and all of the key uh, all the key city departments. They also monitor media coverage in there. They had to be a note just a minute ago from the city saying that trash pickup is going to be suspended today on Friday, because we are into Friday now. A trash pickup is not going to happen. If you normally get your trash picked up today, that is not going to happen from your city and county refuse crews. Uh, pickup will resume on Saturday and Sunday if need be. If there is a backlog and they can't pick everything up that they didn't pick up today, they will be out there again, not only Saturday, but Sunday to pick up your trash. And the closures will also affect convenience centers and transfer stations on the island. So if you were planning to take your uh, bunch of trash down to the convenience center today, you will not be able to do that just uh, because of the tsunami. They have suspended that service. So that is the latest from here from the emergency operating center. If there are updates and uh, uh, there will be certainly as the days, uh, as the hours go on, we will get back to you. Let's see, it's a little after two, so we're going to expect another siren uh, ring here on Oahu in uh, about 20 minutes. The siren should be going off on uh, Kauai uh, momentarily now because Kauai, of course, the first island expected to, uh, to feel the effects of this tsunami as it reaches all the way across the Pacific to us here in Hawaii. Back to you now, Mahea and Paul. All right, thanks a lot, Kiyoki Kern. We should let you know that the Kaiser Clinics uh, have said that they are... that we know we'll pass them on to you as soon as we get them and we're getting a lot of the information from, from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center and that is where Laura Yamada is live. Laura we've been listening uh, waiting to hear what they have to say as far as what we can expect as far as wave heights has that changed from earlier earlier they were saying uh, waves up to six feet could be hitting our islands after 3 a.m. any change to that number? Uh, it, it's pretty much about the same prediction at this point. We uh, finally got some of the readings from the uh, the buoy points that they've been monitoring. That would be Wake Island, also uh, Midway Island. We're expecting to get those readings about two hours ago, but they finally came out a few minutes ago to give us that information, um, saying that Wake Island was about uh, a half a meter above sea level, and um, Midway was about a meter and a half above sea level. But the thing is, is, those are smaller islands, and once they hit uh, the island chain here, that's what they expect, a little bit of a rise. So the same thing they're saying about six, potentially seven feet above sea level, as they've been predicting all evening. Um, and, you know, this is, this is a fast-moving wave, as you guys have essentially been talking about, uh, about 550 miles an hour. Um, so it's been moving quite quickly uh, through the Pacific Ocean. It, will likely slow down, of course, once it uh, gets near the islands, but um, they expect it to uh, hit Kauai first, as you've been mentioning, and also move through the islands quite quickly. Um, but um, they are standing by their predictions from earlier this evening that we're going to see about what they've been predicting. 
And Laura, can you just reiterate in terms of the uh, the waves, in terms of what they're saying at the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, folks are just joining us. It's important information for folks to learn out there. Uh, yes, uh, we, we got an update just a few minutes ago. It's uh, really the first update we've been <laughs> we've gotten in, in more than two hours now. Uh, but they they gave us uh, the indicator that they've been waiting for. Uh, that is uh, Wake Island. Um, they were checking to see uh, what the um, wave level would be there, and it was about a half a meter, which is what they were expecting. And again, also uh, Midway Island, closer to the islands here, that was about a meter and a half above sea level. Same thing, what they were expect ex expecting. So based on their calculations and what they expect to happen before it uh, reaches the island chain here, they do expect, as they had been predicting earlier in the evening, a wave height of about six to seven feet uh, above sea level. So all the precautions that they've been taking um, here at the Pacific Tsunami Center as well as everybody else across the islands, uh, clearly justified um, because there is a lot of concern as to what's going to happen along the coastal regions. They have some modeling information there at the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. What were some of the areas that they're most concerned about, that their models were showing that would be most impacted by waves if they were to be that six to seven feet? Well, I think, first of all, uh, because Hawaii is going to be hit first, that is their uh, biggest concern, and that will um, then therefore um, give them a better indicator, <laughs> so a very short indicator as to what may be happening down the island chain. But um, understandably, the lower-lying areas, of course, um, also Hilo and Kahului were areas that they mentioned early on, Haleiwa, um, primarily, again, because they're just simply lower-lying areas. Uh, so the typical areas that would be of concern, um, they expect to have the same problems. And, uh, Laura, I know that you interviewed uh, Chip McCreary from Pacific Tsunami Warning Center earlier, and earlier he said that the waves could be potentially damaging but not devastating. And, and again, that's uh, I know that we've been saying that over and over again, but that's important information as well. Right, Laura? Yeah, you know, I think, I think um, as in any situation like this, the concern with weaker structures, um, things that ha don't have anything that's blocking those structures, uh, older structures, are, are more likely to have problems. But he's, he's emphasized pretty much throughout the evening. Um, he's the one that's been coming out, um, giving us the updates, as he did just a few minutes ago, saying, you know, our, our primary concern really is people. Um, they think that uh, in this particular situation, most structures uh, should be able to handle uh, what could be potentially coming our way. But, you know, think about standing in... Um, you know, water is just above the knees, how difficult it is, or even above the ankles. It, it, it's tough to move around. So their primary concern has always been the people and making sure they get them to safer ground so they just don't put themselves in any kind of danger. All right, Laura Yamada reporting from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. Thank you so much uh, for giving us the latest information, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you again before 3.07 this morning, of course. One of the things that she's talking about, uh, these waves, when people hear six to seven feet, we're used to surf waves, mm -hmm. and six to seven feet, people will say, no problem. So you it's know, not a surf wave it, with a but crest. It's, it's not, and if you can imagine, uh, this is a, a, a a difference in the tides and when the tide comes up it may come up a foot or may drop a foot but this is six or seven feet and because all this water is coming in it's not just rate rising right there at the beach uh, the energy from this tsunami can carry it inland and that's why being in an inundation zone is such a concern because it's it's six to seven feet of water but it's inland as this water gets pushed in inside those inundation zones and so that's the problem that can cause the damage that can cause some destruction and if people are in those areas again six to seven feet all of that if there's anything uh, that gets caught up in there any debris that's on the ground as the these water this water comes in also gets caught up in that and so uh, that could potentially hurt someone if they get swept away in these tsunami waves yeah I think we're all uh, well aware now because of those images from the Indian Ocean tsunami that it was just the wall of water that came in and uh, earlier you know the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center said since that tsunami and since the Chilean earthquake they've really uh, taken a look at their modeling and their assessments and they said that from the last time we had the tsunami warning last February that uh, they did it they believed that they did a good job that that was their final report they did a good job with the tsunami warning and getting people to evacuate and this time around their procedures are essentially the same you know they they might have tweaked their models a little bit they've got uh, some things that they're looking at but essentially the same and they believe that they are uh, the information that they are getting out today is good
All right, and uh, we've been talking about the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. We have some uh, pre-recorded interview with Chip McCreary uh, as far as the latest the information that he has available out. We're going to go ahead and play that again in case you missed it from earlier in the night. Again, this is Chip McCreary with the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. What about California? By the time the tsunami gets there, will it have lost power? It will only lose a little bit of power due to the spreading of the wave. Um, you can imagine uh, dropping a pebble in a pond, but as the wave uh, spreads out, uh, the, the distance around that circle gets bigger and bigger, and therefore the energy diminishes. But the wave doesn't lose energy to friction as it crosses the ocean. It's very efficient. Uh, it's actually moving water very slowly, but it's moving the whole water column in the ocean. So it's a lot of energy, uh, and, and that energy maintains its way. It's going to go all the way across the Pacific and impact the coast of South America. Chip, I know I may be asking you to say something that you've already said before we will able, were able to join you, but can you please update us on your latest forecast time and possible wave heights? Has anything changed? Well, no, our, our forecast remains uh, the same. We're expecting um, roughly maximum amplitudes in uh, Haleiwa and in Hilo of around two meters above normal sea level. And uh, the other places uh, that we are able to model um, with uh, high precision, there's six, six of these places are all less than those values. Now, um, those don't represent all the coasts of Hawaii, uh, so in other places you can have variability. I mean, we could have uh, some places that will have more than two meters and, uh, and other places have less. But uh, if you want to uh, just think about a general number as a maximum amount, that's, and six feet is significant. And as a service to some people who may be in those other areas, you mentioned six areas, can you tell us about some other areas where maybe the wave heights do not reach two meters? Well, uh, we wouldn't expect it in uh, in Waikiki, for instance. Uh, you've got a big reef offshore that helps give some protection because the the wave loses energy coming across the reef. But um, it's uh, it's it's not something that's really easy to predict. There's no real rule of thumb about all of this. You really need the models to tell you uh, which areas are going to get big waves and which are not. And we're still looking at just before three o'clock. Yes, uh, should start. Uh, arriving here around 3 in the morning and uh, um, keep in mind that uh, the, the hazard could go, to, could go on for many hours because it's going to be a, a whole series of waves. How uh, quickly? I think there are a lot of variables involved. What should the people of uh, Kilo and Haleiwa expect with six foot waves coming ashore? Well, I, I can't say exactly. Hopefully, uh, everyone is is out of the evacuation zone and and they should expect not to get wet from the tsunami wave because they're out of the evacuation zone uh, but you can have all kinds of effects with uh, with the tsunamis when they come on shore uh, they can if, if they're if they inundate significantly they're going to be coming in with high currents um, they can pick up boulders